Hi everyone, it's Jen with this week's reality show recap for The Real Housewives of New Jersey. I just wanted to let everyone know that I was missing last week because I attended a conference and I lost my voice. <laughs> so I had absolutely no voice and it didn't return uh, completely until Thursday of last week. So I would have sounded ridiculous trying to do a video recap from last week. But um, just some quick thoughts on last week's episode. Honestly, all I can say is that Dr. V is a miracle worker. She seems to have put the family back together, so two thumbs up for her. As far as this week's episode is concerned, uh, the main thing seemed to circle around uh, getting the family back together and Joe Gorga doing a billboard for Sizzle Tan. Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um I found it entertaining, at least, that everybody seemed to be concerned about whether Teresa was going to think he was copying her, and should Melissa do it? Shouldn't she do it? Because, you know, Teresa's made all these comments about Melissa does everything Teresa does, and blah, blah, blah. I think there was a little too much talk about Sizzle Tan. However, I do think it was fun to see um, the photographer, Manny, who takes wonderful pictures, and... Uh, uh, Robin Santiago from Illumination PR in the background. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. Shout out for Robin. Um, it was great to see everybody back together for Sunday dinner. All the kids looked happy to hang out with each other. The grown-ups look like they're doing okay. They're drinking a lot to hang out with each other, but whatever works. Everybody seems to be biting their tongues, um, and it's working. So whatever it takes to work, who knows, but it's working. Um, I took some notes so I didn't forget. Uh, let's see. Um, Jacqueline, Melissa, and Caroline talking. I just wanted to point out that Jacqueline looked uh, completely adorable in the cute short skirt and the knee socks and the high heel boots. Oh my god, she looked completely adorable. Um, let's see what else was there. Um, I did find it interesting that at dinner, uh, at Sunday dinner, that Joe Judice was the voice of reason uh, when it came to the topic of Jacqueline uh, and telling Teresa that she needed to just move on from all the Jacqueline crap uh, and be done with it. So I thought that was interesting because he's not usually the voice of reason. Um, you don't associate Joe Judice and reason. Those two things don't go together in a sentence. Um, and anyway, I thought uh, the other big highlight for me was um, the perspective that Kathy has on Rosie's relationship status, kind of looking at how Teresa and Joe have struggled not getting along with each other's spouses. So um, I think that everything that's happened has given her a new perspective. And Rosie hasn't dated anybody in a really long time. She said it's been like six years since she's been with somebody. So it was time for... Um, she really wants to get back into a relationship, so they took her all into, or they all went into New York City. Um, the Wakili's and the Gorgas and Rosie went into some big, I don't know, it looked like a lesbian bar. I don't want to say a gay bar, but it looked like a lesbian bar um, that had some huge party going on and tried to get her in there and mingle. And you could tell she was nervous because she drank a ton and yapped and... Um, was a little bit of a chatterbox, and it, it was funny, though. I mean, she's, it, she's Rosie. Everybody loves Rosie. So, you know, hopefully something will materialize, and um, it'd be nice to see her have a girlfriend or something like that in the near future, because everybody loves Rosie. He, who doesn't love Rosie? Um, other than that, uh, you know, the other big thing was Jacqueline and um, Teresa finally got together at the end to have a conversation. I know Chris and Joe were downstairs and guys don't hang on to drama like chicks do. You know, two guys can sit in a room and have a glass of wine, have a cigar, and they're done with it. They don't need to rehash. They just move on. And Teresa and Jacqueline, um, didn't look like they were headed in that direction. Um, Teresa didn't look like she was going to come to Jacqueline and say, hey, I know I did this and this and this that hurt you. I'm really sorry. Um, I don't really want to continue our friendship, but I'd like to at least be civil. Not really the tone she took. Um, Jacqueline definitely looked like she was um, holding back and trying not to start World War III, so I um, applaud her for that. But um, I don't know how that one's going to turn out. Um, they didn't finish the conversation on this week's episode. We'll see more of it next week. 
Um, Teresa still looks like she's blaming Jacqueline for the whole posh fashion show uh, craziness from last year uh, and saying that Jacqueline's the reason that she and Joe didn't talk for a year and a half. And I think Teresa's actions are why she and Joe didn't talk for a year and a half, but Teresa's got to come to that on her own. Um, at any rate, that's kind of this week's episode in a nutshell. There wasn't really that much else exciting going on besides, you know, uh, those three things. And then, of course, the Manzo boys are uh, putting Little Town together. But otherwise, you know, it was a lot of love fest between the Gorgas and the Judices. So uh, tune in next week. Uh, we'll have another episode of The Real Housewives of New Jersey on Sunday night. And hopefully I'll get you a reality recap on Monday morning. Or Monday, at least Monday, at some point on Monday. So I hope everybody has a good week. Uh, as always, I'd love to hear your comments. Uh, let's make it constructive and have a good one. Bye.